Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tim Gaither Podcast, Wrestling Wednesday. My guest today is Dennis Hall. Dennis Hall is the best Greco-Roman wrestler in U.S. history. He's a three-time Olympian. He's a world champion. He's a ten-time U.S. Nationals champion. And I cannot wait to talk to him. Make sure you like and subscribe and uh, put some positive comments and all that stuff on the channel. I would really appreciate it. It helps me out. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Here we go. What's going on, buddy? Not much. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. No, I'm glad to do it. Man, I just watched... uh, I just watched your match with Brandon Paulson. That t- for the it was a long one. yeah, <laughs> to make the Olympic team in two thousand four. And man, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've never spoken to you in, in my life, and I teared up watching that. I mean, even when they were when the crowd started chanting for you guys about ten that minutes. Crazy. It just looked us through the match. Yeah, I bet. I mean, just the the sheer. You know, I don't think the casual observer knows how hard you guys were wrestling. I mean, good Lord. It was just, it was beautiful. I mean, it was it was very inspiring to watch. And I'm sitting here in my office by myself, and I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. The tough part was, man, we were good friends, too. Oh, yeah? And, you know, uh, I made the decision to drop uh, the year before in August. And... I'm like, okay, I gotta give my best shot to win the Olympics, and uh, I figured it was at 55 kilos, and the weight cut sucked. But um, you know, I got down there, and you know, we had trained together for probably four or five years, and that was it was tough to have to wrestle, him. and then you know, one of us is staying home. Yeah, you know, and that's what sucked. Yeah. Yeah, I really, uh, you know, I, I, I could tell, I didn't know you guys were good friends, but I could tell how much respect you had for him, you know, in that hug. And, uh, you know, some of my best friends in my life were people that I competed with and 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 gave that hug to after the after the match. And uh, it was it was awesome. He, was Is he how much younger? Is he younger than you or no? Yeah, I think he's about three, four years younger, somewhere in there. Because he did make five. He did make an Olympic team, right? Yeah, he made the ninety six team. We were both on the nineteen ninety six team. He took a silver that year along with me. Okay. He was at the weight below. And fifty five fifty five uh is one twenty one, right? Yep, one twenty one. Was that a hard weight cut for you? Oh, it sucked. I started <laughs> out when I made the decision I was about one sixty because I was trying to get bigger to uh, for the weight class, because they kept changing weight classes, and uh, so I was big when I made the decision to cut, but um, yeah, it was definitely a tough cut. Good Lord, 160 all the way down to 121, How, that's almost yeah. that's almost 40 pounds, and I can't imagine you were a fat 160, so... I mean, I, I had a little bit, because I was, uh, you know, at the time, uh, just lifting heavy, trying to get bigger, because I... I felt like I was too small for 132 and uh, just trying to pack on some weight. And when I made that decision, I just started eating super clean, you know, a lot of uh, meat and then uh, just vegetables. Yeah. Stayed away from the carbs. So, so did it the way a lot of guys are cutting weight these days. Yeah. In 2004, I mean, that wasn't even like the the – the rage or whatever to cut out cars was it? How, you already knew about no, that though, huh? I just knew that that I I really felt good when I had. I, I'm a big steak guy, so um, I knew my body felt good and ran well on beef. So did yeah. a lot of beef. People probably look at me and think I'm crazy because it's not chicken, you know. <laughs> but yeah. I did a lot of beef and my body felt good and was able to train hard and keep my muscles intact. Yeah, how how tall are you, Dennis? Five three. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, I pretty short. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, what kind of relationship did you have with Terry Brands? I noticed he was in your corner. Yeah, Terry and I, good friends. Uh, he went after nineteen ninety six. Terry and I competed against each other in college. At my freshman year of college, I wrestled, and then I wrestled him. What well, would have been my sophomore year, but I hate compete for the Badgers at that time. I had left Madison at that time. So we had wrestled each other. Uh, 
You know, he's a good guy, but when he's a competitor, he's a dick. You know, that's all I can say. I, I remember wrestling him at the Northern Open, and uh, I think I was beating him going into the third period, and he ended up winning seven to five, something like that. And at the end of the match, I'm on bottom, and uh, he has his head, hand on the back of my head, shoves my face into the mat, gets up, run, runs back to the stand, and... I uh, get up, I try to get up and walk back normal. My low back was so good that six minutes of wrestling, it was crazy. I, I walk back, hunched over, shake his hands, he runs off the mat, and he swearing, pissed off that he didn't beat me worse. And I'm thinking, you're a dick, man. <laughs> but uh, So that was my initial thought of him, he's a dick. But um, yeah. and at the Olympic uh, training camp at 96, he missed the team. He comes up to me. We start talking because I respected him. Now he's two-time world champ sure. at that time, and he uh, just got to Colorado Springs. And he's like, "Hey, can you help me out with gut wrenches?" I'm like, "Yeah, no problem." And uh, so we started training a little bit together at that camp, and then I went down to Iowa to train with him. Some he come up to Wisconsin, and we just kind of got to have a good friendship, and um, you know. He, I uh, had him come over to Sweden with me for a world tournament as my training partner. So um, then in 99, he struggled a little bit with uh, not wrestling at the world championships that year. Had to pull out because he was afraid he was going to die. Nobody really knows that story. I don't know if he shared it or he has, but uh, I, was, I was in his corner. I said, Terry, I said, it's not worth dying for, man. I said, if you feel like you're going to die, just take some time off, get your body healthy, and make a run at it. Just stay in shape. And uh, he did that, made the 2000 Olympic team. So, when, yeah, we were, we were pretty good friends. When you say he thought he was going to die, I mean, was was he sick, or how do you mean? I don't. I don't know if it. I don't know exactly what it was. I think it was just the overall stress of, of competing. There was a couple times where I, uh, I believe he passed out at home, and he passed out one time. Uh, I believe it was in uh, Pan Am's as he was heading up to Canada for the Pan Am's. He was in a sauna and and uh, passed out in the sauna, right outside the sauna, and so he he was having problems with with that part of his health. And I think he just was scared that he was going to die. And I told him, I said, it, it ain't worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I've never met him and I don't know him like you do or anything, but it seems like to him, it probably was worth it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was, but he was scared. I, I could tell you at that point, just yeah. from talking with him, he, he really thought that he might die from, you know, the the weight cutting and the stress that comes along with trying to compete at that level. Yeah, wow, that, that that's a really cool story. I appreciate you telling it to me. Um, so did did you? Uh, what was your college career like then? I I think I read something like you left school to focus on Greco. Yeah, yeah I uh, got recruited by the Badgers. Uh, was on scholarship for the Badgers and. When I signed my letter of intent, I had John Osvito, Andy Ryan, and Dave Schultz were the coaches. And uh, when I got there in June, uh, we had to do some testing or some crap. Uh, and I get to the testing and stuff, and my roommate, Keith Davison, who wrestled for the Badgers, was a few time All American, uh, told me, he goes, Hey, Dennis, do you know that uh, John left? I'm like, no, and I'm in Wisconsin, he's in Indiana, and uh, he knew that uh, Osvito and Schultz had left at that point. They were keeping it pretty quiet in Wisconsin. So I go through my freshman year of college without John. I, you know, I signed primarily with the Badgers for Osvito because I, I wanted, you know, he's an Olympian. It's what I wanted to become. And uh, when he wasn't there, it was tough. It, I uh, didn't have somebody beating on me, didn't have somebody looking over me and helping me improve. So I, uh, after my first year in college, I made my first world team, senior level world team. And uh, I had to make a decision because I petitioned NCA for a semester off. 
and Nancy denied my, my request. They said if it would have been a university age level, I could have got it. Yeah. I'm like, you kidding me? Huh. And uh, so I had to make a decision, wrestling world championships or wrestling Nancy A's. Yeah. To me, you know, I talked to some close friends and I said, what the hell should I do? I mean, they're like, do what your heart tells you to do. And when my best friends told me that, I knew what, I knew I had to give up my scholarship and go try and uh, do well at the Worlds and, and pursue the Olympic dream. When, when did you start wrestling? I started wrestling uh, probably about four years old. I had okay. two older brothers that wrestled, and uh, I used to go to their practices, watch them. I begged my mom to let me start, and uh, finally... About five years old, I was in my first competition. Not that you have to start that young these days. You know, I think sometimes kids start too early. Yeah. But uh, um, started, I uh, went to my first national championship, which I didn't have a clue what the hell freestyle or Greco was at the time, but went to it in uh, Norman, Oklahoma, at the University of Oklahoma when I was in first grade. Went on four, so it wasn't successful right away, but I uh, kept going back and did okay. But um, after my freshman year of college, I, I left and never looked back. Cool. Wrestled uh, internationally for 15 years. How many world teams did you make? Uh, including seven in world teams and in then three Olympic teams. Okay, okay. Um, wow, that is that is a, a heck of a run. It, what is uh, what makes a great a great Greco wrestler? You know, I, I think the biggest thing that, that makes a Greco wrestler is a guy that understands his own body and is able to control his center of gravity. And I'm I'm working with uh, a lot of the Greco guys, some young guys right now, and. The thing I focus on with these guys is controlling their own center of gravity and realizing that your opponent is going to give you pressure that you can use against them. And okay. I, I think a lot of time as coaches, we teach technique all the time. And, uh, you know, our guys are so looking at for technique that they ain't feeling what the other guy's doing. So yeah. trying to get people to see it from a different perspective. Yeah, it's one of my biggest regrets looking back on my wrestling career that I didn't I never tried Greco and and I think I would have been good at it. I had a I had a great headlock and I I was really good at getting five point moves and that kind of thing and and upper body and I didn't have I had decent leg attacks, but I wasn't great at it. Almost all my points came from upper body stuff and so I really wish I would have uh, given it a try. What you what know, I, I think we miss a lot of guys like yourself just because we don't have you know, number one in the U.S., it's not publicized hardly at all. I mean, right now they got freestyle events going on all the time. I get so pissed off at full wrestling and, and all the different organizations that ignore Greco. It sucks. I, being a Greco guy, it's like pounding your head against the wall. Yeah, yeah, I, I bet. My wife and I went to the World Championships when they were in Vegas, and we watched... Yeah, we, we, I was there too. Oh, you were? We watched every yeah. session. We watched uh, the women's and the Greco and, and freestyle. And I, I tweeted at Flo, not that they listen to me, but I was like, Greco deserves more attention. These guys are freaking exactly. great. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was really exciting, especially Robbie Smith's matches. Yeah, um, that was a match. I, I got so pissed in that match. I bet. We got screwed against the Russian. Yeah. I mean, it, it was blatant. It, yeah. I don't understand how that can happen. Yeah, he was giving up a heck of a lot. That guy was like, it looked like he was about a foot and a half. Yeah, good God, he was big. Um, what is more tiring uh, of the three styles, freestyle, folk style, or collegiate? Uh, freestyle, folk style, or collegiate. I'd say uh, probably collegiate. Collegiate's got more of a grind. And in freestyle, you can kind of pick and choose times to relax. Um so I, I think collegiate, you're you're in the grind. I, I think Greco is physically more tiring than any of the other styles that you mentioned. So, but um, as far as between freestyle kind of collegiate, I'd say collegiate just because, you know, their season is so long. Those guys grind so hard during the season. And, you know, it, it's just, 
it's a different animal. Yeah. Because you got to ride and chew and you got to get out. Backtracking a little bit, how tired were you in that match with Paulson? And did, did it ever cross your mind to quit? <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. That's awesome. I, what, what's funny is when I, uh, when the refs came out and said it's unlimited overtime, we're not going to screw either one of you guys. you got to score a point. Right at that moment, I set my mental clock for an hour. Okay. I'm like, if if it takes me an hour, I'm I'm going an hour, and you know, I, I picked up the pace on him to try and break him a little bit quicker. But he 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 had trained hard, you know. I, so for me, the mindset was just get the job done. I mean, we had trained together and and uh, we had done some grind matches where there might an hour and a half grind match. I think when we wrestled, there might have been three scores in that hour and a half. So yeah. I knew it, it, it might take me an hour or longer. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is funny how you can set your mind for something like, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't run as much as I used to, but whenever I would say, like, I'm going to run five miles, I would get, you know, when I knew I was getting towards the end of it, I would get so tired. And the longest I've ever ran was almost 12 miles, and it was because I told myself, I'm just going to run farther than I ever have. And I just kept going. At some point, I was like, I got to turn around. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you were a 10-time uh, uh, national champion. Other than other than that time with Paulson, um, were you pretty dominant? Were there other teams that you barely made? Or? You know, there, in, in 2001 to 2004, my head... You know, wasn't it strong mentally? Um, you know, I I had a kid. You know, in 1996, my my ex-wife and I had our, my first son, Tyler. And after you have a kid, it changes you a little bit. Yeah. And I'm not blaming him that I didn't achieve what I wanted to, but you know, you realize that you know what? There's more to life than beating the hell out of somebody. You know, you come home every day, your kid's dependent upon you, you know, not that I ever missed workouts to take care of them, but, you know, something in me, I got a little bit nicer. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but, no, I, it was a different experience. But uh, from 2001 to 2004, you know, I, I, uh, I was working, I was number two in the country in 2001, and I, I was working construction that year, um, yeah, plus training full time. And then I got on the Olymp Olympic Job Opportunities Program with Home People, and that allowed me to focus a, a lot more. And then in 2004, uh, you know, I brought a partner in um, from overseas uh, to train with. I actually, I brought two partners in that year uh, to train with and really get ready. And that that makes a huge difference when you have good partners. Yeah, I bet. Um, so you made three world, you made three Olympic teams, 92, 96, and 2004. Um, did you compete in 2000? Did you try out in 2000? Or? I, I was number two. I, I went a best of three match with Jim Goonwald. I beat him the first match. He beat me the second. And then a third match, uh, uh it's probably online somewhere. There, it was a controversial call. I had his body. I had him up in the air, and his leg clipped my leg in the back, and I ended up going on my back. And um, you know, I, I uh, went to uh, arbitration because I, I I knew what I felt as an athlete, but the uh, head official said that uh, we, you know, it was incidental. I'm like, I don't give a rat's, you know what, if it's incidental <laughs> or not, you can't do it. Yeah. But I don't know how, it, but uh, I ended up second. He ended up making the team. Uh, the guy that I was training with at that time, Steve Mays from the Navy, he made the weight class. Up. He beat Paulson out in 2000. And uh, so it, it was a good time. I, I watched all those matches at home. Um you know, but it, for me, it, it was disappointing. I, I, 
after I lost at the trials, I knew I was going to go keep wrestling because I, I felt good. My body was, was healthy still. And uh, I made the commitment for another four years, but things weren't optimal in my training situation. Just, you know, part of it was uh, the financial and having to go out and get a real job like every other American, yeah. you know. But <clears throat> yeah, you know, I... I Put in the next three years to try and make it back, and I, I made it back in all four. Yeah, I wonder if wrestlers today realize how lucky they are that if they're elite, they can make a living doing it. You know, back then you guys had no to clue. still. Yeah, I have no clue. I mean, I I was lucky compared to in the eighties. Yeah, you know, I at least we got six hundred fifty bucks a month from USA Wrestling. You know, in the early nineties, all the way through, I believe two thousand, and I think it. In 2000, they bumped it up to like a thousand bucks a month for the number one man. Which is still not a lot of money. And no, I, I remember <laughs> I had uh, Chris Campbell on, and he said that in his first world championships, they had him, they literally slept in a barn. <laughs> oh, I believe I, it's crazy. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. I, re, I remember going overseas one time. I was so pissed. I was in uh, Poland. And I'm cutting weight pretty hard for a pre-world tournament. And uh, we're at this crappy hotel, you know, at one one to to or one bathroom per floor. If you didn't wake up early, you weren't getting a warm shower. It, and uh, I we're going to the chow hall, and I'm, I'm eating this soup that was like a cabbage soup uh, with uh, tomato juice and stuff. So I'm eating that all week, and we get... Towards the end of the week, it's at the end of the pot. And I reach in there to get some, and I pull out a mop head. Oh, my God. I'm like, what the hell was I in that week? <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> you guys just laughed at me, because I was the only one eating the soup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, can you recap your three, uh, your three Olympics? I'm going to get to your yeah. world championship, but I, I would love to hear about your Olympic experiences. Yeah. You know, 1992 was awesome. Um, I made the team at 21 years old. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a clue what the hell the Olympics were, really. I mean, yeah. I, you just see it on TV. And, uh, you know, it was great. Uh, our head coach for the Olympics was Tom Manko. Tom Manko uh, knew, he asked do any of you guys not have people coming? I'm like, yeah, I don't have anybody coming because uh, my parents own a small mom and pop grocery store. And make a long story short, uh, I it was a car company out of uh, Michigan. Ended up uh, sending my parents to the Olympics to watch me. And that was cool. Yeah. Being, having them there and being able to see me. But, uh, the opening ceremonies was unbelievable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm walking through uh, to the field where all the athletes are, and we get there. You just, it, it was amazing walking through the tunnel. But uh, I'm on the field, and I'm talking. John Smith is right next to us. All the wrestlers were together. And, you know, I knew who the hell John Smith, Smith was, but I didn't think he knew who I was, you know. And uh, he's like, Dennis, he goes, are you nervous? I said, no, not yet. He goes, just wait, you'll be nervous. <laughs> and uh, when the guy lit the torch at the end of the opening ceremonies, that's when it hit me. I was in the Olympic Games. Yeah. And after that, I started thinking, holy shit, I can get embarrassed on uh, world television you know, <laughs> if I don't wrestle well. Yeah. And, uh but the competition, I mean, it was just weird, man. Going into the Olympic Village, I remember watching uh, the Wimbledon finals at the camp at in Lake New York, and uh, it, Yvonne, or Andre Agassi was playing uh, Eastern Isavik or whatever, the Croatia, I believe, okay. in the finals. And uh, I'm walking in. I'm almost. I'm about to be late for a meeting because uh, I was at my parents' hotel, and I get, was coming back. I, to get there on time. So I'm getting butt through the security and this guy got a tent rack on his shoulder and it was him, Easton Isabic. And huh. if I'm pronouncing his name right, and I'm like, I, I knew I knew him from somewhere. And then I'm like, yeah, he's just on TV. I was watching him at camp. <laughs> but uh, 
and, and seeing all the gymnasts and all the athletes in the Olympic Village, it, it was unbelievable. A lot of the athletes would bring their medals into the chow hall, and uh, the competition was good. I, I ended up going, I think, two and three that Olympic Games. I ended up eighth place, um, which they didn't expect me to do any better. They were happy with that, and... You know, the thing that I remember most after the, the competition part was we all got to go out to the White House. All the Olympians got to go out to the White House and get their picture taken with the president. Wow. And I remember talking to President Bush's secretary, and she's like, you won't want his job. I don't. I can't believe people actually want to be president. <laughs> he goes, his, his day is scheduled every 15 minutes, and... We're talking, and I'm just watching all these athletes go around with their medals, and they got their medals on to get their picture taken with the president. And uh, I was sitting in a chair, and I said, I'm coming back here in four years with the medal. And uh, that's when I really knew I had to get that medal. And uh, 1996, it was I was so focused on my training. I uh, brought in partners in 96. I brought over uh, Mario Olivares. He was a Cuban world champion. Uh, I don't know how I got him into the country, but I was in Cuba, and he was down there, and I invited him up to train with me. We trained for, I think, months together, and uh, he helped me a ton. It was where I was weak and brought us... Uh, to the games and in 1996 I was picked to win Olympic Games by a lot if you look at magazines I was picked to win it uh, being defending world champion but uh, it was good I loved it Atlanta was awesome it was a lot of fun the yeah. crowd was unbelievable I mean in matches where I, every match I had was a tight match uh I didn't go to opening ceremonies because wrestling was the first day of competitions. Opening ceremonies was the night before I had weighed in that night. So I'm back in my hotel. I didn't stay at the Olympic Village that, that year. Um, stayed at the uh, Red Roof Inn. I don't know where it was in Atlanta, but it, uh, it was okay. But uh, I'm in my hotel room after weigh-ins, and Coach uh, Herman comes in. And he goes, Dennis, do you know who you got? I go, I don't, don't know and don't care. He goes, you might care. He goes, you got uh, uh, the Turk. The Turk was picked to take second in the Olympics behind me. He okay. Goes, you got him in the first round. I'm like, okay, hopefully he's ready to lose tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I got the bed early, got up, got a great warm-up in with uh, my training partner, Kevin Bracken. And uh, right before my match, he does an arm drag on me. I, I reacted, and a rib in my back popped out. So I go out because I didn't have, couldn't get my chiropractor to pop it back in. Yeah. I go out. I wrestle my first match. Uh, they're trying to they put me down how many times. I was just expecting to go down because we're from the U.S. anyway. I defended everything. I beat them 3-0. Oh, wow. And, uh I come off the mat, I get my rib pop back in, and then uh, my next match, I'm wrestling a guy from Korea, uh, the referee, man, I wanted to beat him silly, you know, because he, he put me down in parterre, I think, three times that match, and there's no way I was being defensive. Yeah. And uh, make a long story short, I uh, step over on a gut wrench at the end of the match. Uh, he's trying to gut wrench me. I step over. I get to the end of the match with a step over. And uh, that puts me in the semifinals against a guy from uh, China. Sorry, from China. He was a uh, three-time Olympic bronze medalist. Oh, wow. And I ended up beating him 1-0 in that match. It was a dog fight. Uh, I think we went nine minutes that match. Ended up only scoring one point on him and, and won the match. That puts me in the biggest match of my life against uh, Yuri Melnichenko from Kazakhstan. Uh, Melnichenko was a world champ in 1994. And uh, 1995, I beat him in the world finals. So I knew it was going to be a tough match. He had a great lift. And we go out. I, I go out. I wrestle with 
wrestling with him. Uh, he gets a first pass in, and he had to go down. And uh, he gets me up in the air, and he, he throws me. Um, if you watch match on YouTube, they said they they point that my back never exposed, and it should have been a one point lift. And uh, he's up three plus one for the appreciation point, so it's four zero. And right there, I make the biggest mistake in my life. Um, I'm a gut wrencher. If I get on top, I'm gonna squeeze your ribs and try and break them. Yeah. And uh, I'm down four zero. I get him put in passivity. I try to lift him to try to get it all back at one time. And uh, I didn't lift. I wasn't able to lift him and turn him. I did get him off the ground and threw, him, but they didn't give me anything because it was I didn't expose him. So. I end up losing four to one with him, and after match, I see him running around with his country's flag on his back, and I'm just, I'm pissed, you know, because now I know I got to keep wrestling if I want to win that Olympic gold medal. And, yeah. Um, I get on the award stand, get the silver placed around my neck, and you know, I just want to chuck it in the garbage to be honest. You know? Yeah. And now it's upstairs somewhere in my bedroom. I don't know where it is exactly, but. You know, I appreciate it now. I sure. mean, I, I realize that, you know what, some things are meant to happen in your life, and God's got a plan for us. And, and uh, you know, it kept me wrestling for eight more years, and it, it allowed me to meet a lot of great people. Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> my last Olympics was Athens, Greece, uh, where it all began. It was cool. I had a lot of family members over there with me. Um was uh, I had two matches. First match was against a Czech. I never got a good draw at any of the big competitions. I always got good guys. Uh, the guy I drew first was the guy that took, I think, third or fourth the year before at the Worlds. Okay. And I beat him, I believe, three to zero. Second match is against a Ukrainian. I ended up losing to him three or four to one or to zero. And then back then, the, you couldn't wrestle back, spot was done. Um, and I, I remember a reporter, and it sounds like I'm a bad sport, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I come off the mat, and the reporter asked me, how do you feel? That was the first question out for the interview. Yeah. I said, the interview's over. <laughs> if you, don't, if you can't imagine how I feel. Yeah. You shouldn't be asking that question, the first question. I said, I'm done. So I walk away, and the guys from USA Wrestling are like, you can't do that. I said, I'm a damn grown man. I can do anything I want. Yeah. I said, if, if they want to interview me, just ask me about the match. Yeah. So I ended up going back, doing the interview, and I just, they had, you know, the question was, you know, how, how did you think the match went? I said, well, I think the ref was somewhat biased. I said... You know, they let the guy run for four minutes out of a uh, six-minute match. I said, but you know what? I gave it everything I had, and that's the way it's supposed to be, I guess. I said, now I'm going to enjoy the rest of the Olympics. Going to have some fun with my family and enjoy watching the competitors and share on my teammates. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's crazy the, the things people, you know, what, is, what a stupid question, you know. I mean, come on. <laughs> I worry, I worry. At that point, it was about 30, 29 years of my life to win, you know. But it, it's tough when, when you're in situations where you, you know, you, you've been trying to do something for all that time and it doesn't work out. It, you know what? You're just frustrated. You just, it, 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 that was a hard moment because I realized that was the last time I was really going to step on it to really to try and win, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question. Was You won the world championship in 95, and yeah. then you got silver in 96. Was was the feeling of winning in 95 greater than the heartbreak of losing in 96? Does yeah, that make sense? Yeah. See, <laughs> 1995 was unbelievable. Um I ended up wrestling four former world champions that year to wow. win the world championships. Wow. In that tournament, I wrestled four world champs. And, you know, um, the weight class, 
the other thing that people don't really understand is, you know, some of those, probably one or two of those guys that, you know, plus we had an Olympic champion um, that was in the weight class too. I did luck, not luckily, but um, I didn't get to wrestle him. But uh, you know, the the worlds, you got four to five matches at the Olympics. You probably have three to four matches to be a Olympic champion. And you know, thing is, is people remember Olympic champions a little bit more than world champions. But uh, for me, just to be called a world champion, uh, yeah, that's what I worked my entire life for. So that's got to be a highlight of my career, um, you know, because, you know, to do it in the way I did it, where I beat four world champs in, in the same term, it, it, it was, uh, and a lot of those guys were two, three-time, four-time world medalists or Olympic medalists, too. Yeah. So there was no question that you were the best in the world because that the, to, to run that kind of gauntlet, you know. Yeah, it was tough. It, it was uh, kind of funny. I wrestled my buddy Agassi Manuki, and Agassi uh, ended up coming to the States. I brought him over in 1999. I wrestled him uh, in May of that year. He beat me. He had me up in a re or had a reverse lift lock on me, and I, this was in May, and I felt my my rib about to snap. And uh, so I jumped my butt up in the air. He puts me on his shoulder. This is at the Concord Cup. It's supposed to be a friendship duel. It's it, USA versus the world. And he's got me on his shoulder, slams me down for five, gets me up a second time. And uh, after that, I realized I better figure out how to defend the reverse lift. Brandon Paulson and I both worked on it, and I came up with the plan. And then I, at the Worlds that year, he got the passivity on me first. I went to my defense. He didn't even get his hand locked, hands locked for his lift. I get back up to the feet. I see it. He seems to step down. Walking back to the center, I end up beating him 8-0 in the semifinals. Nice. So it was kind of nice. Yeah. Even when it counted. What, uh, um, what would you say the hardest hardest loss you ever had to take was? I'd probably say the, you know, the, the 96 Olympics. Um, because that eliminated me from reaching my ultimate goal in wrestling. Another tough loss was my uh, sophomore year in, or in high school. I uh, won state as a freshman. My sophomore year, I lost uh, in the quarterfinals of our state tournament. And um, it was a tough loss, but it was a great loss. Uh, you know, and the reason I say it was a great loss is because um, – after the match, I come off the mat, and I got a smile on my face. My brother, Dan, uh, was in my corner at the time, and he goes, what the heck's so funny? And I look at him, and I go, I'm glad I lost. He goes, what? Smacks me on the back of the head. He's like, what the heck are you talking about? I said, well, everybody in this arena wanted to see me lose, or not everybody, but a lot of people. I said, you know, there was a lot of pressure to win. I said, now tomorrow when I go wrestle for fifth place, I can have fun. Yeah. You know, and it was that day where I, I said, if wrestling ever becomes a job, I'm, I'm walking away from it because it's too hard. Yeah. And I, I made it a priority to uh, keep the sport fun and, and train different and, and enjoy the process. Yeah. So that loss was just... It sucks because I ain't a four timer for high school, but did you end up winning three? Put perspective. What did you end up winning? Yeah, you were three yeah, times. That was my only loss in my high school career. Oh wow! And my brother, my brother's dick. Sorry if that if you gotta delete that, but uh, Dale is my brother. He coaches out in uh, North Platte, Nebraska. He beat the kid that I lost to when he was. Uh, I think a senior in high school, so he gives me crap all the time. And that's why I think I hate that boss. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is freeing though. Sometimes you know when you're not like I remember my senior year of high school. Um, I went undefeated my senior year, and I I'd gone undefeated in kids like all the way to the state finals and the state semifinals, but I'd never had an undefeated season. 
And at the regional mm-hmm. at regionals that year, I remember thinking, I don't care if I win this match. It doesn't, it, you know, because I've been undefeated going to state, and it never works out. I always end up on the shitty side of the bracket, whatever. <laughs> And so, exactly. so I went into that match so free and I ended up winning and, and obviously, and, uh, but I, I wasn't, I, it took all the pressure off me being like, it, I'm not, I'm not doing this to win regionals. I don't care about regionals. I, I want to win state. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, what was the best? Can be good. What's that? I said losses can be good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if, if my boy wants to wrestle, I'm I'm definitely going to teach him that that losing, if you learn from it, is not necessarily a loss, you know. And yeah. when I when I was coming up, that was one of my biggest problems was, you know, if if I lost during the season, I was like, well, that's it. I'm, I can't be I can't be perfect. So, you know, and, yeah. and then you know it it, it affected me, but um, it, it affects the way you train too, you know, and, and you know, I, guys that want to always win they ain't willing to take risks in practice and you know i think that's what helped me later on in my career is i in practice i would tear for points and just try stuff and see what works yeah uh i saw also that your freshman year the guy you beat in the finals was uh a two-time state champion he was a senior that had to feel pretty good yeah yeah it was it was it was good it, you know, I, I had two older brothers that wrestled. They were both four-time high school state place winners. Neither of them won a state championship. But uh, my freshman year, I was a freshman. My brother Dale was a senior. And we come home on Wednesday night from practice. And I remember this like it was yesterday. We're sitting in watching TV. And uh, he goes, I don't feel good. He goes into the bathroom, pukes, and... If he would have been healthy, he would have won it that year. I, be, I truly believe it. And uh, he ends up coming out, and he's running a fever. And you know what? He, I give him credit because he went and wrestled the next day at the state tournament, but he didn't have the juice in him to, yeah. to get it done. He ended up uh, fifth that year. And the motivation of watching my brothers in, uh, well, they call it the barn, it's where they wrestle in a coal center now, but we used to wrestle in the barn right next to Camp Randall. And uh, watching those guys lose every year and just being pissed off. <laughs> like, Why can't anything go right for these guys? They're good dudes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I told Dale after he lost, I said, I'm winning it. I'm winning it for, for you and Dan. And, uh, that was motivation because I didn't want it. I didn't want it to be the jinx of the whole name at the state tournament. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I'm. I'm sure that that senior that lost to you, I'm sure he felt better when uh, you know years later when you became a world champion. He's like, see, I knew that guy was a freak. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah, it, you know? He was a great guy, nice guy. Yeah, you know, really great competitor. Um, you know, I, I had known my brother. I wrestled with him uh, when he was growing up, so I knew who he was. And it was a it, that was a neat moment in my life when it stayed as a freshman. Oh, I bet. Very cool. Yeah. Um, do any of your kids wrestle? Yeah, I got uh, three boys and my daughter. Uh, I and a daughter. My three boys. Uh, my oldest boy is twenty four. He's uh um he doesn't he doesn't wrestle anymore, but he wrestled all the way up through college. Never was super serious. I with my kids, I don't push them. I if they come to me and say, "Dad, I want help," I'll help. Yeah. And uh, I got one right now that's uh, 18 years old. He's he's doing some Greco stuff. Hopefully, uh, can help him out and maybe get him on a team down the road. And then I got a. Uh, uh, ninth grader, freshman year, uh, freshman this year. I want that's going to wrestle, and you know, I, I, it's just crazy with the way schools are right now. Who yeah. knows? Right now, Wisconsin's telling us uh, they can have six dual meets, and I think that's supposed to be the season. They haven't talked anything about postseason, so you know, I hope just for these guys, for all the athletes out there, I hope they get a normal season or somewhat normal. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, without, you know, getting into all that, um, because I wanted this to mainly be about wrestling, but I I don't understand a lot of this stuff. You know, like, if you go to the CDC website, you're like, what are we doing right now? (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, and how much much the information changes, you know? I mean, how how they flip-flop on certain things, and, and you... Yeah, it's it's frustrating. Um, you know, I, I run my own wrestling club too, so you know, you you got to be careful and making sure everything's clean and kids are coming in. It, it's a pain in the butt for coaches. Yeah, I I, I couldn't imagine being a high school coach right now with the restrictions they're going to have on the kids. They they actually in Wisconsin. I I believe hundred percent. This is this is what I was told that they want guys to wear masks during competition. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I, that's what I've heard. And, yeah. And I mean, come on, man. It, you know, I, it's crazy to me that they're even thinking about having a mask. I mean, it's going to be attached to your ears, inside your headgear. Somebody's going to break something. Yeah. That's yeah. just my thought. Or, or pass out. I mean, wrestling is hard as hell exactly. when you, you know, when you can breathe, it's hard as hell. So, exactly. For I, sure. I, I, I've watched some wrestling lately where they'll they'll wrestle a six minute match and then they'll bump fists. I'm like, you guys just yeah. wrestle. <laughs> yeah, so why can't you touch hands? Yeah. I, 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 if if this is a largely political, it is disgraceful what they're doing to to people's lives and children and these kids who I can't imagine if my senior year of high school had gotten taken away from me. Oh, I agree. Yeah. It changes so much for so many people. And the, the guys I feel sorry for are, are the small business owners that, that are having their business taken away from them because of this. Um, yeah. You know, the bars, the restaurants, the, you know, the, the mom and pa shops and, you know, it's, when they first came out with all the stuff and how they were shutting everything down, I, I said right away, I said, there's going to be more deaths from suicide than it has ever been before. It's, it, you know what? You can't do that to people. Yeah. You know? And the, the sad part is how, how, to me, this is just my personal opinion. The sad part is how everybody's just going along with everything right now and, there, there ain't a lot of questions being asked, you know? yeah. And, and that, that's frustrating because it, to me, it's a dangerous slope when you, when you ain't asking questions. Yeah, you know, and people are so misinformed. You know, you'll see videos, and the reporter will be like, "How many people have died of the coronavirus?" And they're like, "I don't know, thirty uh, percent of the population." And you're like, "No, it's it's like <laughs> exactly. it's like point two eight, you know." And yeah. anyway, I, like without making this about me. Um, I really only wrestled my junior year, junior and senior year of high school, and if I wouldn't have had my senior year, I mean, it would still bother me. So it's oh, just, for sure. it, it just I sucks. Agree. I feel bad. It's horrible. I mean, you know, at least last year, I don't know, um, in Wisconsin, they got to wrestle the state tournament. So, you know, I, I if they don't get to do it this year, I, the seniors is the guys I feel bad for. Yeah. Just it being taken away from them. Yeah. Um, what what would you say the hardest thing you've ever had to deal with, whether it was wrestling or, or not? Hardest thing by far is, is uh, you know, for me, there's two things. Uh, I had a brother that died in a drinking and driving accident uh, when I was a junior in high school. And he was the one that was driving. And um, my mom got real strict on me. I mean, not that I was a bad kid, but uh, wouldn't hardly let me go to a movie, you know? Yeah. Because she was worried about me. And But uh, my brother's death, because that was the brother that started me in wrestling. So yeah. I looked up to him. He was my idol, I guess you'd say it that way. And, you know, I questioned. I questioned. I questioned. You know, and my, why do I want to wrestle when I could be dead at any moment? So yeah. it made me think differently. Yeah. And uh, I'd say that other uh, life experience that, that uh, really changed who I am, kind of, 
is uh, going through a divorce. I, my ex-wife and I got divorced in 2016, and you know, you, you find out who your true friends are, you know, and it, it that was a one of the toughest things I've ever been through, and I don't wish it upon anybody, but um, you know what? If if you come through it, you just you got to keep fighting, and that's pretty much uh, you know what I what I'm doing, you know, trying to get as much time with my kids. I was on a mat today before I did this uh, with my two boys, so that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you touched on it earlier. I, I, I try to tell myself all the time that every everything that's happened in my life, good, bad, and indifferent, is all part of God's plan and all that stuff, but it, it's sure hard to um, understand it sometimes, you know, no matter, no matter how much faith you have. I remember waking up, uh, I go back to my brother's death, if you don't mind. No. Um, I wake up at uh, about 2.30 in the morning at my mom and dad's house because I'm in high school. And uh, our doorbell rings. And uh, I think I'm dreaming because I'm, I'm from a town of 575 people. So who's coming to my house at 2.30 in the morning? Yeah. So I put the pillow over my head and uh, it rings a couple more times. And this time I know it's for real because my mom and dad's bedroom was right next to mine. My mom pounds on the wall, Dennis, get the door. So I get up, I throw some shorts on and, and a t-shirt and I get halfway to the door and I'm like, hell no, I ain't answering the door. I, I, I said, hurry up, mom and dad, get up. Because if there's somebody out there that's going to try and kill me, I want somebody here. Yeah. And, uh, they wake up, they come to the door, and I open the door, and there's two police officers standing at the door. And I, I invite, go, is this a hall residency? I go, yeah. And uh, they go, uh, is your mom or dad home? And point to them, because they were up the stairs, about five stairs. And uh, invite them in, and police officer goes to me, or goes to my mom and dad. They go, we got some bad news. My mom goes, was it Rick or Vicky? because my uh, brother and sister were both police officers. And they said, no. And then my mom goes, uh, was it Dan? And uh, police officer shakes his head yes and says yes. And, and uh, she goes, was he in a car accident? Police officer shakes his head again. And I knew what the next question was. So I got next to my dad because my dad was older than my mom. And, she goes, did he die? And I remember looking at the police officer just hoping he, that he's going to say, no, he's in the hospital. And the uh, police officer shakes his head, yes. And I look at my dad, and my dad's face turns as, as white as a sheet. And uh, I grab him, I give him a big hug, and I tell him I love him, and I sit him down in the chair. And... Uh, then we get the details of the accident, and I try to go back to sleep after that. Cause I, I, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I tried going back to sleep, and I can't sleep. But it's one bad dream, and I wake up, and it's a sunny day. I uh, by then my relatives, my brothers and sisters. I got a large family five five brothers, two sisters, so. They're all starting to come over at that point, and I go for a walk, and i uh, just walking outside, and I'm asking God why. And I'm like, my brother Dan was going to graduate from college in May. It, it happened March 22nd. Wow. He was going to get married in August of that year, too. Man. And i just like, why didn't you take me? And uh, I don't know. You know, I, I just was frustrated uh, with God. And, you know, um, the one thing, you know, I, I went to school that day. I came home and I said, I'm going to school because my mom and dad and everybody was bitching at in the house. And I, I couldn't stand it. I had to get out of there. I went to school and, uh, um, you know, I saw my high school wrestling coach, and the one thing with, with high school wrestling coaches compared to a lot of other sports, you know what, they're, they're, they're more than coaches. They, they, they care, and, you know, I went down, I, I walked into the uh, 
high school and I, I went straight to the locker room and uh, my high school coach was coming up the stairs from because he was a fire teacher and he gives me a hug and we just shoot the shit about the good times he had with Dan and you know it, it was neat and I get through the day the next day I uh, come back uh, to school and I talked to my parents that night because it was Thursday night and I asked him, I said, can I try to dress in school? Can you help me dress the school? Because I want my friends to know that, you know what? I know you guys are going to drink, but you got to be smart and watch out for one another. And uh, my mom and dad, my mom called the principal. She knew the principal and said that I wanted to do that. So I, I came to school the next day and, they allowed me to go on a PA and address the whole school. I had written a, a thing up, and I just told my friends, I said, guys, I know you guys are going to go out and party this weekend. I said, I know some of you guys are, are probably going to drink and drive. I said, but I ask you to think about the other people, think about how your family would react if you are the one that dies from drinking and driving. And, yeah. you know, and then uh, throughout the next 10 years, I probably was a spokesperson for drinking and driving, did a lot of talks to different organizations. Maybe I saved one person. So, you know, I think God answers your your questions in time. Yeah. And I, one time I did a speech at a, a Catholic high school in my town where I was training, and uh, I got a letter in my mailbox like a week later, and it was a girl that told me she was going down the wrong path, and I made a difference, and yeah, that she was going to change. Yeah, so that was cool. Yeah, well, that's a you know a heart wrenching story. I appreciate you sharing it with me. There's not much that makes me tear up quicker than thinking about something happening to my brother, and yeah. you know the the fact that you could. Um, make some kind of good out of it and, and be able to have the fortitude to even speak in, in front of your school after something like that. I, I think that's a testament to who you've always been. And, uh, it's, Thanks. wow. I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I don't really know where to go after that, but, uh, I, I really appreciate <laughs> you telling me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very you much know, for I, I, it. You know, I, People just got to understand that, you know what, if, if you've had too much to drink, yeah, sit, sit where you're at or call a cab or call an Uber or something because yeah. it's, it's not worth the heart, heartache that your family goes through. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'd love to have my brother with me today, but you know what, um, you know, that wasn't in the cards and. If I can help somebody else not make that same mistake, then I did my job. Yeah. Yeah, I quit drinking uh, in March. will be 10 years since I've had a drink, and and I, I've, I've drank and drive I don't know how many times and done stupid things, mm -hmm. and, and I, I believe 100% in God, and I think that God has uh, saved me more times than I even know because I certainly did a lot of stupid things, and... I don't know that I was, I don't think I was an alcoholic or anything, but I know that every dumb thing I did in my life had alcohol, it was alcohol related. Mm -hmm. So quitting was one of the best things I ever did. And, and, uh, I don't, I never really well, miss it. On that. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks. That's good. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's. It, it's one of the worst things, you know, I, I see so many lives ruined from it. I just came to the decision. I was like, I'm going to wake up, be in my mid forties, have a full blown drinking problem. My career will have gone nowhere. And, uh, thank, yeah. thank God I was able to, and I, you know, so how do you, how do you do it? I'm just curious. How do you, how do you quit? Well, I, I used to, uh, I used to wake up at, a. Uh, when I was drinking, I would wake up at about 6 a.m. No matter what time I went to sleep, I would wake up at 6 a.m. and just anxious as hell, you know, trying to remember what I did or who I called. And I would see my phone across the room, which meant I had thrown it across the room. And and mm -hmm. uh, and I was just ruining my life. And I went into the uh, I went to the bathroom and and I used to do this to make myself feel better. I would turn the shower on on the hot water and and I would I would jump around a little bit just to kind of sweat it out, you know, like an old wrestler's trick yeah, to to yeah, lose weight. Yeah. And uh put a towel under the door and all that. 
and I was doing that, and I was sitting on the side of the, on the, on the bathtub, and I was just sitting there, and I had my head down, and, and I started praying, and I said, God, please help me stop doing this to myself, and Dennis, I heard an audible voice say, help yourself, you know, and hearing those two words, it was like God telling me, I have given you everything that you need. I have given you all the talent you need. I have given you all the strength you need. I have given you everything that you need to be happy and successful in life. If you want to stop doing this to yourself, stop doing this to yourself. And I didn't quit that day. It took me a couple of weeks because I was on the road and I tried to quit. Mm -hmm. I tried to quit that night and I almost had a panic attack on stage. It was awful. And because I, I didn't realize how, I, how much I had gotten used to having a couple of drinks before I went on stage. Yep. So I, I got to a point where I knew I had like three weeks off, um, not going to have to be on the road at all. And I just didn't schedule any shows. I didn't do any, anything at all. And uh, I think I did one, actually, and it was really hard to, to do, but I got through it. Um, and then I, I started going to AA and all that. And I, when I read the uh, third step prayer and I, and, I, and I did it, it was like, I don't know, maybe 20 days into it. And the, I, I kind of embarrassed. I don't remember the prayer, but the gist of it is take away this obsession, you know? And, uh, I said that prayer and I, I, I've honestly never wanted to drink since, you know, I've never really had That's the, awesome. never really had the desire and I'm around it all the time. And it's yeah, just I'm never, sure. it never crosses my mind to 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 go back there especially now that i have a son there's no way in hell i'll do mm -hmm. it you know i mean you can't get cocky about it because um because you're just one drink always yeah exactly. you're you're one drink away from screwing everything up but but that's that's kind of a long-winded way to, to to say that i i quit and uh it, it's helped me in every way you know i i lost like 25 pounds and i've kept it off for like 10 years and uh I'm healthier now than I was in my 20s in a lot of ways, oh, you know. I so, gotta hear you. Yeah. For did, sure. Did you ever drink or? I mean, I, I'll have some bit, uh, occasional beer now uh, these days. But, you know, when I, when I was training, the only time I had a beer was after weigh-ins. Yeah. It was stupid. For some <laughs> reason, I, I think because I cut so much weight, I, I was a big weight cutter. Yeah. So I'd have a beer right after weigh-ins. I mean, it, it, people thought I was nuts. Yeah. But, I mean, seriously, I wouldn't drink all after weigh-ins. I'd have one beer, and that would help relax me. Yeah. And it was kind of like a ritual thing. But, it, um, you know, that otherwise during my training, I, I never drank because I, I didn't want to put that into my body and and then have to take it out, you know, and I knew that it wasn't good while you're training. So yeah. I didn't really have any, any issues with it. Plus with my brother dying, you know, I, I knew that it wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it makes total sense to me because when I was, uh, when I was wrestling and I would make weight, um, nothing tasted better than a soda pop. And I think it was because, yeah. and that's the worst thing you can drink, but, but back then, you know, when you're young, you do all kinds of dumb stuff cause you're young and you can handle it, but a, nothing tasted better than a soda pop. I think it was the sugar and the, the bubbles and everything. Regular water yeah. almost made me want to throw up, but, yeah. but drinking, uh, drinking a soda pop for some reason. So I get it. Um, I get yeah. that part a hundred percent. Um, what would be your, uh, what, what's the best part of being a dad for you? You know, just, just the little things, you know, being there for the kids who, when, when they need you, number one, just, you know, you see them sad, you know, trying to make their day better. You know, I mean, as, a, as an adult, you know exactly what I'm talking about with all the stress that, that adults have these days. It's just, you know, being there for them and, and letting them know that that you're always going to be there for them, just like God is there for us every single day. Yeah. You know, and, and having their back the way God has our back, uh, you know, and, and for me, it's just getting them to be 18 and responsible. Yeah. You know, and not, you know, I 
There's so many choices for our kids these days to do stupid stuff and make bad decisions. And I mean, school is right now is really hard for probably more for the boys than the girls these days, just because it's online. Uh, my ninth grader goes to school two days a week. He, he's home five days a week. So just trying to keep him on that path where he doesn't screw up in school, where it hurts him later. So, you know, I just, uh, you know, overall love that you have for your kids. I, re I remember each kid when I saw them the first time. And, you know, that, that's when I truly found out what love was. Yeah. It was the first day I saw each and every one of my kids. And there's no other love out there. You know, it, it's funny and it sounds probably like I'm a dick. But, you know, I, I thought I loved my wife. You know, I, I did love her, okay? But sure. when you have that kid, it's a different type of love. Yeah. It, and and that is, the, it was a, that's a, that was probably the best part, is holding each kid for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, I, I put my son to sleep almost every night, and, uh, you know, I, I talk to him and everything, and, and when I, uh, when I, my favorite thing in the world right now is I'll go, who's your daddy? And he'll smack me on the chest, and it, it is it is my favorite thing in the whole world. And and when I was feeding him one night, I thought to myself, you know, you think of weird things sitting in the dark, and I was like, would I thought to myself, would you trade this kid for a billion dollars? And and without question, the answer is no. And and once you realize that, then all this other shit that we think is so important, it doesn't really matter because if I wouldn't trade him for a billion dollars, which could buy me anything in the world. Then I've already got everything I need, you know. Um, I agree. Yeah, so it's uh, it, and, and I understand completely what you're saying. And a good friend of mine told me the same thing. He said, he I was asking him what it was, what what it felt like to love your kid, and he goes, "Have you ever loved a woman unconditionally?" And I go, "Honestly, probably not." And he goes, "Well, your kid, you will," and yep. that made sense to me, you know. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that was some of the best advice I ever gotten. Um, going back to wrestling, do you do you follow it a lot nowadays? I try to. You know, I, I mean, I'm halfway current on all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, I watch NCAs, and I, I the college wrestling to me is isn't. Everybody thinks the NCAs is better than the Olympics. And they don't understand the difference in position, be, you know, between that jump from the NCAs to the Olympics. You look at the best guys in college, they, they have got to that pinnacle. Some of them have, some haven't. But, um, you know, I, I do, I keep an eye on all, all the rest. And I, I watch the NCAs with the guy, with my uh, kids club sometimes you know I uh, went to the U.S. Open uh, just a few weeks ago coached uh, three four guys down there so I try to keep involved still yeah you're absolutely right I mean uh, people don't realize you know especially casual fans they don't realize the the level I mean and the perfect example is Pat Smith the first four-time NCAA champ I think the mm -hmm. I think third is the highest he ever got on the Olympic ladder maybe second mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. there's there's not too many better collegiate wrestlers in history than than Pat Smith. Um, and you touched on it earlier, and I meant to say this, but I've heard a lot of people say that winning a world title is almost harder than winning an Olympic title. You know, which it might not get the fanfare, but people that know know. You know. Yeah. No, I and I'd agree with that. But just because a uh, prime example of some of that testimony is. In uh, 1996, a uh, guy from Poland at 68 kilos, he didn't qualify for the Olympics, but he got a wild card. Yeah. Goes to the Olympics in 96 and wins the Olympic Games. Wow. You know, but he was in the world last year and he didn't qualify for the Olympic Games. Well, I mean, it's there, there's a lot more competitors. I see in, like a lot of the brackets at, at the Worlds, you got 10 guys that could win a world championship any given year. Yeah. You know? At the Olympics, all 16 guys could win it, you know, but it's, 
it's uh, you know you just got more competitors and and guys that have won medals that that may not get the chance. Yeah. Know? Well, I've got two more questions for you, and then I'll let you go. Um, what was the best thing that wrestling has taught you? Best thing that wrestling has taught me is, you know, how to get back up after a setback. You know, you got one choice, either quit or get back up and get back to work. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing I think is just... Uh, dedication you know the, the, the amount of work that it takes to get a, a high level in wrestling and I, it, it could even be a high school state champ you know to be a high school state champion you know what you have to do for the rest of your life you yeah. know how hard you got to work and so i those are the two things that i think really make a difference and and you know it, it's carried me over in my life uh, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, if I wasn't a wrestler, I'd probably, probably be dead right now. Yeah. Just because of the stress of life and, and the, the struggles that, that have been, I've, I've had. And I, I just say, you know, every day you look up, what can you control? Not, not, I, you don't fear it as much as, uh, you don't fear certain things as much as, you would if you hadn't wrestled. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody's got the one bad dude that they've had to wrestle that, you know, how can I beat him? Well, you had to figure it out to beat him. Yeah. You know, and it, that's just like life. You know, you, you can't walk around being afraid. And I, I think that's, you know, you look at where we are in the United States right now, how, how we're just, everybody's afraid. Yeah. And it, it drives me crazy. It's, you know what, the way I look at it, the way I look at this whole COVID thing, is COVID real? Has it killed people? Absolutely. Absolutely it has. Okay? But at the same time, I believe in God. And I believe God, the day I was born, he already had the day I was going to die. Yeah. And if I don't live every single day, I'm already dead. Yeah. So, you know what, I'm, I'm trusting God, and you know what, when it's my time, it's my time, man. Let's get living again. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the biggest sin you can commit is not to use all the abilities God's given you, and I've been guilty of it a lot, and I'm not, mm -hmm. you know... Um, yeah, and that's you know been one of the better things I guess about this lockdown. If you want to look for positive things, is it's changed my you know I've gotten more in touch with with God and my relationship with God and and all of that and 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 I feel like when you try to have a better relationship with God, He puts certain people in your life. You know, like the people that I've been in contact with lately, and people like yourself, and uh, um, you know, it's. Uh, there, you, you have to look for the positive in everything, and and I, I kind of forgot what I was going to say about. Uh, um, I had a point. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I had a point a second ago, um, but I, I'm my my head is flooded with so many thoughts right now about uh, everything you just said. Oh, I was going to say that if it wasn't for wrestling, I. I don't know where my life would be right now, but I don't think it would be very good. I mean, I didn't wrestle at the level you did, but it. it I, it without getting into my childhood, I always had wrestling, you know, no matter what was going on in my life that wasn't stable, I always had wrestling, you know, to look forward to and to something to look forward to that weekend or no matter what was going on at home or, or whatever. Um, my last question for you is, uh, for one match, do you think you could still compete with the best in the world? I'd have to get get in better shape because <laughs> I always wore guys out. Yeah. But uh, you know, wrestling wise, I I think I, I can battle with those guys. You know, they're they're thinking they're trying to win, and and the advantage is older guys have is you don't care about the wins and losses. You you're just going by what you know. I I know from where I'm at as a coach right now. 
my mind is so open to learning new things and, and to see things differently. Yeah. When I was a competitor, I was a guy that would just grab you and try and beat the shit out of you and bully you. <laughs> and now as a coach, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to use my opponent's reaction against them, how to use my pressure, you know, to, to create a reaction and then feel his reaction. And I think that's where, as coaches in the United States right now, and even throughout the world, you know what, we got to do more uh, research on and more uh, kind of slowing things down technically, you know, from the tie-up to the takedown. Because it's like I'm speaking a foreign language when I'm coaching a lot of times to these kids because, number one, they don't know their own body well enough. They, they don't understand center of gravity and how to control that. And it's hopefully I'm matching your question because right now I got off on a tangent. But no, fine. You know, I, I think uh, if, if I was able to just get in good enough shape, I think I could go with these guys because my I see things a lot different than what – competitor CMS. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just the coolest thing in the world to say that you are the best in the world. And, and I don't think anybody would argue that you're the best U S Greco wrestler we've ever had. And, uh, you know, it, it's been a complete honor to talk to you. And is there anything that you would like to say before we get out of here? No, thanks. I just appreciate your time and, you know, just, uh, Keep doing what you're doing, and hopefully you can get God's word out there to people and, and maybe turn somebody towards God. Yeah. Um, we need that in our country these days. Yeah, we sure do. I appreciate everything you do. Well, thank so, you, buddy. It was a pleasure. Thanks, man. I, uh, I'll i let you know when this is out, and, and again, I, I can't tell can you, you how. Can you the Olympic trials? Um, be at the Olympic trials? Where are they going to be at? I think, I, I believe Penn State still. Okay. I'm not sure. Uh, I would love to. I, I don't have any current plans to. I went to the one in 2016 in uh, um, Iowa City. And Iowa that, City? Yeah. All right. Well, well, I'm sure if we'll be at some tournament sometime. Let yeah. Me know, let me know if you're going to some of the big tournaments. Shoot me a text. I will. I would love to stay in touch with you. I feel like I made a friend today, and I really appreciate Same it. Same here. Yeah. Same here. It's uh, It's... It's one of the coolest things in the world. You know, I, I, I get nervous before I do these things. And what takes my nerves away is just telling myself how lucky I am. Because I used to read about you guys in USA Wrestler. And now talking to you guys is, you know, so freaking cool for me. And especially when, you know, people um, are so forthright with, with, you know, the struggles in your life and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Mm-hmm. I, I can't say enough positive things about you. I really appreciate you, and uh, God bless you, and, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. All right. Thank appreciate you, Dennis. It. Take care. You too, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. That was uh, one of my favorite podcasts ever, um, especially concerning wrestlers. That guy was so cool. Uh, it was a really good conversation. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, as always, go to makingithappen.com, M-A-C-A-N, ithappen.com, and help out little Bo Macon and his family, and I hope everybody's doing well with all this stuff, and, uh, try and stay positive, and, you know, talk to God. I've been doing a lot lately, and it, it helps, so I really appreciate you guys' support and listening to these podcasts, and, uh, it was a total honor for me to be able to talk to that guy. There's no question he's the best Greco-Roman wrestler we've ever had. One of the best wrestlers, period, not just Greco, but, uh, so that was really cool. Thanks, you guys, so much for listening, and God bless all of you. Take care. Bye. Do us both a favor and click on that subscribe button.